The countdown clock is in its final few seconds before the launch of Shuttle Endeavour. We're less than two minutes away from launch right now. The six-man crew is going to spend ten days in space using a high-tech space radar system similar to the one used for years on spy satellites to monitor environmental changes on the Earth's surface. NASA commentator Bruce Buckingham is the other voice you'll be hearing until liftoff. You see there, about a minute 39 seconds before liftoff. This launch, by the way, could be visible for several hundred miles up the east coast of the United States. The shuttle will be traveling north-northeast rather than due east to reach an orbit which can see 95% of the Earth's surface. It has to go north on takeoff in order to get that close to the North Pole so that all of its uh, following orbits will uh, cover so much of the Earth's surface. By evening today, the astronauts will have the space radar operating, sending us the first pictures of the hurricanes around the world, the western United States brush fires, and environmental changes all over the world. German and Italian scientists have developed equipment for the shuttle radar lab, and there are observation sites all over the world. About 2,000 ground-based observers are going to confirm the information coming down from space. For our international viewers, you can stand by for more programming after this. We'll have some word for you on the latest on the labor crackdown in Nigeria. But before we do that, we will, of course, show you this launch. So stay with us for that. In the final 30 seconds, we'll listen to Bruce Buckingham as he uh, comments on the shuttle's liftoff. We have a go for auto sequence start. Endeavour's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. We have three main engines running. Three, two, one. And have main engine cut off. GLS safing is in progress. GLS safing is in progress. Cap 101, BFS motor to 102, LDB shows 1. Copy, launch team, that's page 909. We have a cut off of the main engines. The countdown clock has stopped. CDR, perform BFS uh, We've got a problem with the um, shuttle Endeavour out on launch pad 39A. What happened was that the uh, main engine shut down at about half a second before the solid rocket boosters were scheduled to be ignited. You can see now they're uh, putting the white room uh, back over next to the door so the astronauts can get out of there. Water is on. Go ahead, CDR. UFS safing is complete. JBFX, have you terminated your launch cooling spray? DLT, perform APU shutdown. This is bad news. Uh, it, it, uh, it's probably not dangerous news, but it's bad news for the shuttle program. Let me uh, give you some background that I got from a NASA manager about an hour ago. He said that it uh, was, uh, it was unlikely that they were going to have a problem like this, but the fact is... Uh, we look good. All green. Uh, copy. The and fact is, there have been technical problems uh, with this shuttle more than on any of the previous three or four shuttle missions that uh, have had to be solved by ground controllers and the engineers going inside the shuttle over the past couple of days. The, uh, the NASA mission manager that I talked to about an hour ago suggested to me that if this particular uh, scenario occurred, where they had the main engines fired and now, as you can see, they're filling them with water. It could well be two weeks before this shuttle could, uh, could take off. We won't know that for certain until they've assessed the damage to the main engines, which were very, very hot just about 60 seconds ago and are now getting cold and wet from this water deluge that is cooling them down so the shuttle will be safe. Computers has occurred unscheduled. Everything appears to be safe with the crew. 935, ISL, ISL verified. DPS? DPS since the Challenger disaster uh, back in 1986, this is the most serious safety problem that's ever occurred with a shuttle.
APD, APD verifies 18 and 19. You can hear um, people verifying numbers, which started at 1 and are now up to 18, 19, or 20. These are emergency safety procedures on a checklist that have been being completed by uh, uh, on the shuttle itself by the crew and by ground managers as they go through these procedures. Continuing with the safety checks. Everything continues in order after this unscheduled cutoff of our main engines. Just milliseconds prior to liftoff. Picking up on step 22, CDROTC, reconfigure heater. Roger, heater reconfigure is in order. Copy. There are more than 400 switches inside the shuttle cockpit that the pilot and the commander are now having to put in a safe position rather than a launch position. And they have to verify this with controllers on the ground. What they're doing is shutting down electrical systems on board one by one so that there could be no spark, which would could potentially create trouble later. They're going down a circuit breaker panel now, cutting off the the various power sources to various parts of the shuttle orbiter. That's complete. Copy panel F8, the flight controller power switch off. That's complete. CGSS OTC verify OAA is extended, locked, and configured for retract. CGSS can verify. NOTC GLS can configure, uh, we're configured for PCMMU to remote. Okay, CDR panel C3. What has to happen before the, uh, the crew gets the out of the shuttle? Just a minute, we'll listen to NASA commentator Bruce Buckingham. The data that's coming in from the onboard computers, as well as the data that's uh, being assessed by the consoles here in the firing room. OTC TLS primary staging is complete, or go for transition to T9. In order for the crew to get out of there, all these switches that the crew controls inside have to be put in the safe position. Calls the engine shut off. We anticipate that the crew will shortly begin their egress procedures to leave the vehicle. Shift 33, verify configured for G1 to G9. CMPL. CMPL's ready. c -lock. The way the shuttle is set up, it is a two-level uh, flight deck. You have the, the people who drive the thing, the commander and the pilot, and one other crew member on the upper level uh, where the windows are so that they can look out. The other three crew members are down below them. And um, the, um, the way you get out of there is through that, uh, that hatch on the side. And in general, people come out in the opposite order of the way they get in. So the payload specialist, the ones on the lower level, would uh, almost certainly be the first ones to come out. But inside the shuttle orbiter right now, there is uh, an, an, an abnormal for the Earth uh, atmospheric pressure. They sort of pump it up like a balloon to have it at flight pressure. And uh, they're going to have to open the hatch to release that pressure before they can come out. At any rate, this problem with this launch of the shuttle is going to uh, cause NASA to have to crunch its schedule a little bit. It was expected that on the 9th of September, another shuttle would be leaving from launch pad 39B at uh, Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center. That will probably now have to be delayed because NASA is not able at this moment to uh, keep two shuttles in space at the same time. They only have one operating control room, and you have to have two to have two shuttles in orbit. They've never done that before. They, uh, they certainly may have this mission and the next mission going up at close to the same time, however, with only a couple of days between. TBC verifies 249. TBC. The preliminary assessment is that we had a problem with our main engine number three, high pressure oxidizer turbo pump. We are still continuing to assess the data as it arrives in the firing room. In case you missed that, um, the shuttle was, uh, was scheduled to lift off about six minutes ago. The three main engines had been brought up to full power, or almost full power, the, uh, with less than a second to go before the shuttle was to leave the pad. The computer shut down all three main engines. There was a lot of black smoke coming out of there, which was expectable. And uh, let me show you the video of what that looked like about six minutes ago as the, uh, as the launch was, uh, was down in the last final seconds. We'll just watch it. You can listen to the commentary at the time, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I know about what has happened. We have three main engines running. Three, two, one. And have main engine cut off. GLS safing is in progress. GLS safing is in progress. Um, 
We have a cutoff of the main engines. The countdown clock has stopped. A very uh, an unusual happening. This has happened once or twice before in the history of the shuttle program. What happens is that there is an onboard computer that tests all three of the main engines in the last five seconds before liftoff. Main engine one came on, operated correctly. Main engine two came on, operated correctly. Main engine number three came on and uh, was beginning to operate correctly when a sensor that was connected to the computer sensed that one of two very fast turning pumps called turbo pumps was operating uh, in an incorrect way. It was not putting enough liquid oxygen down into that engine's firing chamber to create the right amount of thrust. So the computer said, okay, we're shutting everything off before the solid rocket motors, which can't be shut off, were ignited. Okay, I copy that. Uh,